பிரிச்சூடி பெருமானே அருளால is the temple of Thyagesha or Thyagaraja at Thiruvarur. Thiruvarur is a very ancient and sacred temple town in Tamil Nadu. The Thyagaraja temple at Thiruvarur is one of the Padal Petrasthalam. It's one of the temples, very ancient temples, on which songs have been sung. Padal Petrasthalam. The songs, Padal, here referring to the hymns, the devotional hymns that were sung by the Shaiva devotees, what are called the Tevarams. The Tevaram that you just heard. Pitta Piri Chudi Pirumani Arulala. This is a Tevaram composed, sung by one of the foremost among the Shaiva devotees, Sundaramurti or Sundarar as he is called. Sundarar lived in Thiruvarur. Now, Thiruvarur has uh, and its environs, Thiruvarur and its neighboring. Uh, areas have for centuries uh, seen the flourishing of music, dance and many other arts. Just about 60 kilometers from Thiruvarur is the uh, ancient uh, town of Tanjavur. Tanjavur is uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very famous temple town in South India and it houses the incredible Brihadishwara temple. The Brihadishwara temple which is a uh, um, world heritage monument according to UNESCO. Now, and in fact Brihadishwara temple has inscriptions um, detailing the number of dancers and musicians that were attached to the temple. Tanjavur has been the capital of uh, the political capital of many dynasties that ruled South India, uh, beginning with uh, the Choras and the Pandyas, the later um, Nayakas of the Vijayanagara Empire, and then still later the Maratha kings. All of them, all these dynasties which ruled Tamil Nadu and other areas, neighboring uh, states, all these dynasties had Tanjavur as, as their capital. Tanjavur was not only a political center but also a cultural, religious center. And um, Tanjavur is a very fertile land with the Kaveri coursing through it and um, when you have prosperity the arts also flourish and so it is that all these many of these dynasties that ruled from Tanjavur have been liberal patrons of the arts beginning with music and dance. Raghunath Nayaka in the 17th century a Nayaka ruler was um, himself a musician and he wrote uh, a very significant Lakshana Grantha musicological treatise called Sangeeta Sudha. Later on, the later part of 17th century, the Maratha uh, rule was established and King Shahaji has left behind many, many compositions. He was a prolific composer and he composed many genres. He was as much interested in music as in dance. 
and uh, his successors, all the success, successive Maratha kings were also liberal patrons of music and dance and uh, King Sarabhoji too. His contribution is uh, particularly significant in that he built, he envisioned and built um, the Saraswati Mahan library which is still in Tanjavur. It's um, the Saraswati Mahan library houses rare manuscripts um, on varied subjects, music, dance, um, Jyotish or astrology, Ayurveda, um, Shilpa Shastra and what have you. So it is a treasure house really under such um, munificent political patronage, music and dance flourished and so did the other arts. Tanjavur and Turvarur and many surrounding areas have produced many musicians for centuries. Um, so much so that there is a saying that unless you are born in or near Tanjavur and have drunk of the sacred waters of Kaveri, you cannot be a Carnatic musician. That is uh, obviously uh, a gross exaggeration and uh, certainly not true, but it only uh, indicates the, the, the centrality that Tanjavur had in the evolution of Carnatic music. The Carnatic Trinity or the Mumurti as they are called, Tyagaraja, Uttaswami Dikshidur and Shama Shastri, all of them were born in Tiruvarur. Though only Dikshidur lived here for any length of time, but they were all born in Tiruvarur. Before the Trinity, many a musician had left a mark uh, besides the devotional outpourings of the Shaiva and Vaishnava devotees that I have spoken about earlier. We have had musicians like Arunachara Kaviraya, Uttakada Venkata Subbaya, um, Mari Muttapillai, Muttu Tandavar and others who composed in Tamil and uh, others like Narayana Tirtha who all lived in Tanjavur and Turvarun, the nearby areas enriching the musical atmosphere. Now besides these musicians of course me, there were also other traditions of music uh, notably the, the Bhajana Sampradaya, the Nama Sankirtanam established by Sridhar Ayyavad and uh, with the, this Nama Sankirtana tradition uh, was inspired and grew from the, the Maratha Bhajana Sampradaya tradition. There was also the Melatur Bhagavata Mela tradition. All these factors, so many musicians, so many musical traditions, uh, all of them contributed to a very, very musically surcharged environment in Tanjavur and Thiruvarur and the neighboring areas. Tanjavur was a region that was shot through with music and more music. When we speak of the Carnatic Trinity, we always uh, mention them in this order, Tyagaraja, Dikshidhar and Shama Shastri. Tyagaraja was not the oldest among these, he was not the youngest. Shama Shastri chronologically comes first, Dikshidhar comes last. But it's Tyagaraja who we always mention first and uh, it is worthwhile pondering over why and there can be many answers proffered but another question which is also equally valid is why only these three there were good great composers before these three and after these three um, then why is it only these three are grouped together as the Carnatic Trinity. There is no doubt that there is a certain privileging of their compositions and um, um, 
every Carnatic musician aspires to um, to internalize their compositions uh, and uh, the compositions of the Trinity are really seen as the bedrock of Carnatic music. Now why is this so? It is an important question and cannot be easily answered but I here offer some ideas, some of my own ideas. One is um, that of course the, the, their output they were very good musicians, they were great musical minds um, and uh, they did not compose 10 or 15 compositions, they composed many, many compositions. Tyagaraja has left what we have received of Tyagaraja's compositions uh, run to about between 700 and 800. Of Dikshidar we have 500 to 600 compositions. Uh, Shama Shastri, we have very few, we have only 80, though he is reputed to have composed 300, only 80 are in circulation because these compositions had to be passed from uh, generation to generation by, by from teacher to student and uh, only some compositions got preserved this way. So in sheer numbers, there are their output is uh, significant. Musically, of course, they are of a very high order. And um, within the, um, the compositions that each composed, so if Tyagaraja's uh, compositions have come down to us in a few hundreds, uh, there is a great, uh, there is considerable diversity within this corpus. So it is not as if all of Tyagaraja's compositions are alike, um, which uh, is the case with some other composers. Again with Dikshidhar and Shama Shastri, within their compositions, the corpus of their own compositions, there is um, some diversity. And perhaps what is most important is that the the literary and musical sensibilities of these three composers. Vagyakaras is what we should be saying. They were Vagyakaras. Um, the musical and the literary sensibilities, their styles are very different. There is a whole gamut here. And um, within this gamut, many other composers can be fitted. So it is that these three are identified as the Mumurti. In fact, many later composers um, consciously and unconsciously modeled their compositions after one or the other of these three Magyagaras. Uh, 